he is kind enough to join us. It has been a while since we've had Damian Maia on the program. It's great to have him back on. He is here to talk about the victory and what is next for him. Let's say hello to the great Damian Maia. Damian, how are you? Hey, how are you doing, Ariel? I'm doing great. It's great to have you on the show. It's been a while. Congratulations on the win against Ben Askren. Let's start there. Did you think that the fight would play out like that? Because it did seem like for the first, you know, two rounds or so, predominantly, it turned into like a striking match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we pretty much, we knew that what could happen. We knew that I thought he was going to try to take me down when probably in the last minute of the round or last minute and a half and try to stall on the ground. So we, we train a lot of uh, like kind of Greco style to keep the fight standing up. And then when he eventually he would take me down, my goal was like to right away to be ahead of him and, and don't let him stall. So we train a lot of uh, be always ahead. Don't let him start the movement, but start before him to make him move and, and, and open spaces. And at any point in the fight, did he seriously hurt you? Did you feel like you were dazed? I mean, again, he, you know, there, there were some moments there where he was connected. He's not known for his striking. And so I'm wondering what it feels like to get hit by Ben Askren. I didn't feel hurt, but of course, he, he, he's an athlete. So he, he, you know, some of the punches, he, 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 he land well. But I didn't feel dizzy in any punch. And I knew that I should, you know, keep in the pace, keep in the pace and wait for his, his mistake. I, I knew one thing that we train also is for me to don't shoot in this fight because he's a great counter-attacker. He's, a, he's a, you know, a great wrestler, but mainly he's, he's better at countering, attacking in wrestling than attacking. So uh, everything that I always do, all my, my, all my techniques, all, all my, my habits of shooting, uh, we, we need to change that. So we train different stuff. Also on the ground, I knew he was going to be prepared for my half guard sweep. So I bring back some sweeps from the time, uh, not just sweep, but submissions from the time I, that I that I was fighting in jiu-jitsu. To submit a guy who has never been submitted before in an MMA fight, does that feel a little different for you? Does that feel a little more special? Yeah, that, that fight was really special because there was a really symbolic fight that everybody was talking about, you know, the... The, the fight against the best two grapplers and like pure grapplers. He really represents, you know, the grappling arts and uh, I'm the same. And uh, I don't think it was like wrestling versus BJJ because, you know, he trains BJJ, I train wrestling. But I think it we, for sure it's a fight that the guys who really represent their arts to really, you know, try to implement during the fight he does with wrestling, I do with jiu-jitsu. And so everybody was curious to see what's, what's going to happen. Even I was like, I don't know, man. When I, I don't know. I was kind of, you know, anxious because I didn't know if he was going to be able to stall me on the ground or not. But, you know, everything that we trained worked. And so after the fight, he even talked about maybe not wanting to fight anymore, that he never really loved MMA. Did you see any of these comments? And if so, how did you, how did you react to them? How did you feel about them? You know, I feel that I told him that I think he, he he's still pretty tough. It's not because he, he... The problem is like when he lost to Masvidal, a lot of people think, ah, he lost in five seconds, this kind of thing. But that happens. You know, everybody knows everybody that fights happens, that a knockout can happen. And and doesn't mean that you're not good. Not good. And I think he's one of the toughest guys in the division. And I think he should keep fighting. And uh, it's... His, his game is very hard for, you know, everyone in the division, especially to the guys who doesn't know really well grappling because he's going to take you down for sure. And the way he strikes is, is like it's not... Uh, uh, people don't understand well, but how he hides his head and how he closes the distance is something that is, is, is awkward, you know, to figure out. It's not easy. It's people just think, oh, this guy strikes... Uh, he has a beautiful style, and people say they 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 think they are a good striker. But with him, he used his striker efficiently to do what he wants, which is getting the clinch. You're 41. You just turned 41. By the way, happy birthday! 42. 42. 42. Excuse you. me, 42. Just turned 42. Yeah. So uh, happy yeah, birthday! Yeah. It's it's Thank amazing. You. November 6th, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and here you are on a three fight winning streak after going through a three-fight losing streak. And I think during the three-fight losing streak, people thought maybe this is it. But you've signed a new yes. contract. You beat Ben Askren, all this stuff. 
if you would have, you know, if we would have talked about this several years ago, did you really think that you would be doing this well in your early 40s? Uh, you know, I, my goal when I started the UFC, I was 29. It was to be fighting until 40, maximum 41. But, you know, as time goes by, I'm feeling well and I'm enjoying. Uh, you know, I keep going. I think I have at least two more fights. And, and after that, you know, maybe I will stop. I probably will stop because I have, I want to do some other stuff that I don't have time to do right now, but it's not because I don't like or because I don't, I don't want to train anymore. You know, I love to train. I love the, the camps for the fights and I love, I love everything around. So it's just because I have other projects that I want to do. So you recently signed a new contract, right? Yes. And yes. how many was that for? That, that, so we did for three fights, Bang being the first fight. So two, two more fights after the last contract. So, Bang is the first one, and then two more now. Okay, and you let's say you win both of those fights. What do you uh, think happens then? Man, <laughs> I don't know, but let's say I win, and they say, okay, you can fight for the title. Then I will resign the the, okay. the, the contract. If, you know, I win, and they don't give me a position, you know, don't, don't let me know what's going to happen, then I, I probably will stop. Okay, wow. Um, and... I know you said after the fight that Diego Sanchez is someone that interests you, but as of right now, it seems like he's not in the UFC anymore. So a couple of weeks yeah, later, have you thought about yeah. who would those last two fights be against, the ideal opponents? No, not yet. You know, I'm talking with Eduardo, my manager and head coach, and we're figuring out now what we want, but I really didn't talk too much about that. We, I finished the fight. I came back to, to Sao Paulo, one week, no training. Then I start to train again. Then I, I came to US and US now for, for a couple of seminars. And we didn't really think about too much. I was just back on training like five days ago. Okay. Are you hoping that both those fights happen next year? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. I want to do those, those two fights next year. Um, and would it bother you, like after the two fights, if they don't give you a title shot, will, will you feel unfulfilled with your career if you don't ever win that belt? No, I don't think so, you know, Ariel. Uh, before, I remember a few years ago, I was thinking, man, if I win the title, I can die the very next day, I will be happy. But right now, my mindset changed a lot, you know, after my family, my kids, after I had that infection in my shoulder. And I think, you know, it's some kind of cliche thing to talk about, but I think I have a mission in my life. Uh, and I say that, you know, that is spread Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and... And, and go and, and, and talk about giving seminars and try to get people to training. And that's, you know, a bigger mission than, than just winning. So I'm very fulfilled because a lot of people, they consider me the best BJJ fighter in, in, in the MMA world. And that's something very important for me, so important as a belt. And, and also, you know, to, to have so many followers and to end my career if I, if I end next year being the guy who represents Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu there and hopefully, you know, get more, most wins in the UFC if I, if I can pass Cerrone and this kind of thing. Uh, I know you're very humble, but do you consider yourself the best BJJ practitioner in MMA history? I think What I think I do, I, 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 of course, I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I'm the one that uh, represents most for sure. You know, all my games... You know, all my boxing training, all my wrestling training is all is is just to be able to put my jiu-jitsu the the game. So I'm not a guy who trained boxing because I'm looking for a knockout, uh, and I'm a guy who 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 is looking for for doing jiu-jitsu all the time. So everything that I do when I'm training in training is thinking about the jiu-jitsu, and I don't think other fights are like that. The other fights they are more like okay, if I need to strike, I will strike. If I need to go to the ground, I will go to the ground. I'm good on that too. But for me, it's all about uh, close distance, get the clinch, and get and use my jiu-jitsu. So I think I, I represent most than, than anyone. Will you want, like those two fights, you have two fights left, right, on this contract. Do you want to get two submissions to tie Oliveira and the, obviously the two victories that would surpass Cerrone if he doesn't win? Like, are these things that you actually think about? Yeah, for sure. That's something very cool. Before the fight, I never think about that because I don't want to, you know, get that in my head. But after the fight, it's always nice. It's always nice to have a record like that. And also, Oliver is fighting this weekend. So, I don't know 
what's gonna happen and it's 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 a nice record for sure you know it's something that i always i always think about one of your very impressive victories as of late was the win over jorge masvidal are you shocked to see what he has become you know, in the last year or so, how popular he's become, how good he has become after doing this for so long. What do you make of this? I think, man, he's a guy who's been evolving, evolving, you know, all these years. He's a guy who is getting better and better and better, more, more dangerous. So I'm not surprised. I think, you know, I'm the same. I'm getting better also with the time. And, and I think every sometimes people, they look to a fighter and they say, oh, this guy doesn't know to punch or doesn't know to, to fight jiu-jitsu. But they look the, the the fight, this fight, the fights of the guys like six years before. And you know, in six years, three years, four years, you can became a totally different fighter. And that's what is happening to him. And and of course he's good in marketing, he's good in, in talking. And the fight with Nate helped a lot because Nate is the same. And but I'm not surprised. I think he I thought he he's pretty tough. He's he's a great fighter and you know, he said if he win the gold, he want to give him the chance to fight against him. So, you know, I'm really cheering for him to get the title shot now, fight the the the, the, the winner of Usman and Kobe, and I, I will cheer for him for sure. <laughs> I want him to win. Yeah. Did you, did you feel like uh, that came out of left field? Like, were you surprised to hear him say that? No, uh, I, I, you know, we... Uh, I was a little bit, but not too much. I think it uh, would be would be nice, and, and I was a little bit surprised, but not too much. And, and yeah, that's it. And just curious, Colby Usman, you fought both of them as well. Who do you think wins that title Ooh. fight next month? That's a very good question. Who do you think? <laughs> Are you asking me? Yeah. No, I just want to know. No, let me tell you something, Damien. Uh, there's uh, one thing that I've learned in my career. It's that MMA fighters are the yeah. toughest, bravest people in the world, but they're also very uh, sensitive. And when you pick against one of them, yeah. they get very mad at you. So exactly. I decided... <laughs> because people are very egocentric, right? Yes. When people say, I think, like Ben asked me, we will not them. I said, man, it's just uh, uh, the guy is a journalist. He should pick somebody. You know, it's, there is no hard feelings about that. Yeah. But some people they really they have the ego too big. But I think it's a very even fight for sure. I think Usman is the favorite. He I think he's more technical. Uh, he's great wrestler and great athlete and been proving that. But Kobe is a trick fighter. I always say that because I fought him and he's a guy who when you start to fight him, you think. You know, will be will be easy because the distance you can connect some punches. But his pace is amazing. He keep going, and there is one thing that you know can change this fight. He's very good on on on, on make you angry, and I think he he as you can see he can he's doing that with Usman. Usman is get getting out of his mind. So I think for Usman it's very important to keep calm and don't try to go there and beat like I be, beat I mean like hurt Kobe, but try to go there and win the fight mm. because if you get in the fight mode in, and not in the, the competition mode, uh, I think he, 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 you know, Kobe will have a chance, a bigger chance to win. I think it's very important to, to Usman understand that because Kobe is used with that, you know, he always trash talking, but for him, it's like, it's the way he does. He doesn't change his, his mindset, but what he does is like, something like McGregor does, he can make the other guy get angry and get, you know, rage and, and try to just beat him. And, and then when the guy gets frustrated because, let's say, he is not able to knock him out or something, he keeps the pace all the way and he has an incredible pace and that's how he can win the fight. But I think Usman is still a little bit, you know, favorite. Okay. And, and finally for you, Damien, is there a secret to your longevity? I mean, you pretty much look the same. You're fighting just as good as you did when you came into the UFC. How, how do you explain this at 42? Is it just, you know, good luck, uh, good genes? I don't know. But for, for athletes, for people, regular people who feel like they're getting older, like I'm 37 now and I feel like I'm slowing down a little bit. What has been the secret mm -hmm. to your success and longevity? I think one secret is like, you cannot make the same mistakes that we did when you were younger. Like you have less space to mistakes. So let's give you an example. Uh, 
when I was 30 or 20 something, I could sleep bad, I can't, could eat not so good and do all these things and keep doing well in training and in competition. Now, I need to take much more care about my nutrition, much more care about my uh, my sleeping time and the hydration also, something that I didn't pay attention in the past. And I think that the, the most important things lays in the simple things. People are looking for secrets, like for the secret supplement, the secret conditioning training or the secret technique, but the simple things like your nutrition, your hydration, your, your, how you sleep, how you, you, how your mind works also, you don't like to don't let bad thoughts go into your mind all the time and, and pay attention on that and be more aware of the things. I think that's the, the most important. And, and when you younger, you can make you, you, if you don't pay too much attention, you keep going. But when, once you're getting older, you have less, you have less and less space to, to make mistakes. Amen. The, the words, uh, words from the wise Damien Maya. And it's amazing, by the way, I love <laughs> like when you, when you tweeted about Anthony Martin on, uh, uh -huh. on Saturday, I love how you always sort of, you always kind of, you don't do a lot of social media, but you kind of pop up anytime someone that you have a history with, yeah. that you have fought has done something notable. I love that you do that. And, you know, keep that connection up with your, your past opponents. Uh, I think it's really cool. Yeah. And also, you know, they are my opponents now, but in a few years they will be just, you know, former, former opponents like of me. And they will be guys, you know, nice guys who I share the octagon and they have the same goals that as I have. And, and I know how hard it is to get there and do what we do. So I have a lot of respect for all the fighters. Damien, pleasure as always. Great to have you on the show. Great to talk to you, my friend. And uh, continued success. And congratulations on your recent success. It's amazing to see what you're doing at this age. Thank you very much, Ariel. I, I really wish you go there, you know. And I'm in New York now, right now at Marcelo's Garcia. You know, I just had a lunch with him. And, but I didn't know your, your, the studio changed. And now yes. you feel much farther. It's very, so, don't worry. Yeah, I had, yeah, I had something to do here, but next time I go there. No problem. I don't, I don't blame you, my friend. Thank you very much for the time, as always. Thank you very much, Aaron. See you. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hoani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.